Karen Jeffrey Life. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and in this video we are going to discuss deadlock handling. Okay. So guys, if you have seen my last video, it was about deadlocks and what are the necessary conditions for deadlock to happen. Now in this video, we are going to discuss how we can handle the deadlocks. So guys, deadlocks are handled in two steps. First step is called as deadlock detection. So in this, detect, in this step, what do you do? You check whether a deadlock is there or not. Now, how do we check whether a deadlock is there? So to check a deadlock, we look for a cycle in a resource allocation graph. Okay. Now, this is, I made this resource allocation graph. Okay. Now here, if we look at this, P1 is waiting for P2, P2 is waiting for P3, P3 is waiting for P1. If you look at this graph, there is a cycle in it. So if there is a cycle in resource allocation graph, then there is a deadlock. Now we go to step two. So if there is a cycle, it means deadlock is there. So deadlock detected. Now second step is called as deadlock prevention. Is called as deadlock prevention. So guys, if you know for a deadlock to happen, so there are four main conditions. Okay, there are four main conditions, mutual exclusion, no preemption, hold and wait and circular wait. So what in deadlock prevention, what we have to do is out of those four conditions, if you break any of that condition, if you break any of that condition, then automatically this cycle breaks. Okay, then automatically this cycle breaks and it breaks the deadlock. So guys, now we will go to the second part, right? How do we do that? Okay, now we know like if I break any of the condition, I break the cycle, the cycle. Okay, now how can I break those conditions and how I can break this cycle? Okay, now we move to that. So we call it as deadlock prevention. So before we discuss it, so we will take that condition one by one and we will see how we can break that condition so guys the first condition was mutual exclusion first condition was mutual exclusion so what happens in mutual exclusion in mutual exclusion the resource if they are allocated to one process then those resource, resources cannot be shared by other processes means mutual exclusion means these resources are non-shareable okay now guys to break this condition if we make our resources shareable for example resource r1 i make it shareable when i make it shareable then both r1 the process p1 and p3 can share it they both can share the resource r1 it can be allocated to both okay if it can be allocated to both then p3 doesn't have to wait for p1 i rubbed it okay and the cycle breaks and the cycle breaks so in mutual exclusion what we do we make resources shareable okay so then comes the second condition Second condition says no preemption. No pre no preemption. So what is no preemption? In no preemption, what happens if a process needs another resource? Okay, if a process needs another resource, it will keep on waiting for that resource, but it will not preempt, it will not release the resources which it already has okay now how we can break the no preemption again we go to our source allocation graph okay so what happens p1 has r1 p2 has r2 p3 has r3 and they all are waiting for each other to release some resources in no preemption can be dealt in two ways one way is 
you give the all the resources which one process needs in the beginning for example p1 needed r1 and r2 okay if i give p1 both the resources r1 and r2 then p1 should not wait for p2 and again it breaks the cycle and again the deadlock is over okay but the problem with this approach is it it gives very low resource utilization why because p1 is taking so this process is starving for even single resource so this approach is not very much recommended okay now again what is the second approach no second approach says second approach says if one process is waiting for some resource which is to be released by other process while this process is waiting it must release the resources which it already have for example p1 was holding resource r1 and it was waiting for r2 okay and r3 is waiting for resource r1 now while it is waiting it can preempt the resources which it already has it had r1 now p3 gets r3 and it also gets r1 and the cycle breaks again the cycle breaks so this is how we can handle no preemption two approaches number one give all the resources to one process let it finish but this will cause a very low resource utilization other approach is while one process is waiting for one resource and if it it has already some resource it must preempt it it must release it so that it can be used by some other processes now come then comes third condition hold and wait hold and wait so what is hold and wait a process is holding one resource and it is requesting for some other additional resources now what is happening p1 is holding r1 and it is waiting for r2 p2 is holding r2 it is waiting for r3 and p3 is holding r3 and again it is waiting for r1 they are holding and they are waiting how we can handle this condition so guys to handle this conditions what we have to do is we have to set a simple rule okay we say if a process is requesting for some resource it can only request if it does not have any resource if it does not have any resource now in this case what is happening p1 is having r1 and it is request, requesting for r2 p2 is having r2 and it is requesting for r3 and p3 is having r3 and it is requesting for r1 so both are requesting all the processes are requesting for the resource and they are holding one resource now what we have to how we can break it a process cannot request for a resource if it already has a resource for example if p1 wants to request for r2 then it must release r1 then it must release r1 when it releases r1 again p3 gets r1 again p3 gets r1 again the cycle breaks and the deadlock also breaks with that then comes boys and guys the fourth condition we call it as circular wait now what is circular wait the processes they have resources and they are waiting for the additional resources which are being allocated to some other process and they all are waiting in a circular fashion okay we call it as circular wait now how do we handle circular wait in circular wait they say they say assign one integer value to the resources assign a integer number to a resource and the resources can only be requested in ascending order can only be requested in ascending order now if you see this already the resources they have a integer value r1 r2 r3 
Now they have to request in ascending order. Means R1 can request for R2. R2 comes after R1. A process who is holding R2 can request for R3. Okay, because R3 is bigger than R2 and it go in a ascending order. But P3, which is holding R3, cannot request for R1. Why? Because R3 and R1. Okay, so R3 comes after R1. So R3, the process which is already holding R3, cannot request for R1. Why? Because the request should be according to ascending order. So it means P3 can request for R4. It can request for R5 according to the ascending order. R3, R4, I6, R5, I6, R6. But it cannot request for R1 because it is not an ascending order request. Okay. So if it cannot request for R1, again the cycle breaks. Again the cycle breaks. And with that cycle, this circular weight also breaks. And with circular weight breaking, the deadlock also breaks. So guys, that's all in deadlock handling. So deadlock are handled in two steps. Deadlock detection and deadlock prevention. And to, to, de to detect a deadlock, we have to look for a cycle in a resource allocation graph. Right. And to prevent a deadlock, so all the four conditions are there, you need to break one condition and it will break your deadlock. So guys, I hope you understood it and I, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. So if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section. And for more IT related videos, please subscribe to my channel. Okay, till then, stay tuned.